Again, just to kind of keep you uh, motivated and excited about this, I hope you are. Um, remembering that we started with this guy here, and we ended up with this painting. Okay? Be back with you in a few. Something that I, I just discovered, and it's one of those things that oh, you painfully have to go through, and I don't know why this occurred, but it did. When I had a, a drop all with the layers after I had used this liquid ink, and then I came back to a soft charcoal and really, really did a, a fairly nice job. Uh, the uh, facial areas, when I flattened all that, it uh, it took away my, my charcoal. So, um, patience is the key, again, with this. <laughs> kind of like learn and live. But right now, I just wanted to show you where I picked up. And we'll get back to the soft charcoal for the uh, skin textures. Boy, I'm so disappointed because it just turned out so nice. And I don't know why when I... I flattened the image that it um, it acted the way that it did. So maybe that's a, a little flaw in the in the program. I, I don't I've not had that happen to me uh, before. So I'm I'm just a little bit nervous now about uh, dropping all until I'm near the conclusion of the painting. But in this case, I'm using the um, oils, glazing flat, reset at about 20. I don't need a whole lot. And all I'm going through here is just following the, the uh, lines that are, that are in the hair. And I'll be adding more. And I'll show you how to, to do that in this painting. We also covered this in great detail on uh, Cantorina's Tiger. So what I'm going to do right now, as a matter of fact, is, is add some color right here. And we've got a couple of ways to do that. We can take the reset down to zero. And now it's going to act as a blender, as you can see. Didn't turn out too bad. Looks pretty nice in that area. I'll have to I'll have to accept that. The only the only thing I I would change differently would would be and I'll do that right now. I'll bring down the brush size to about six, and the reason for that is not all hairs are as large as I was painting them. So what we're going to do is make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to continue to be a little creative in the process here. And now I'm going to come back to my reset somewhere between um, uh, 10 and, and 20 has, has always been pretty, pretty good for me. So in any event, this is kind of what I'm doing. And I really, I mean, you've seen it once, how I uh, painted the skin textures with the soft charcoal and how it really had a nice effect. I, I worked uh, quite a bit after the, um, or during the intermission and really got this thing looking good at least in the in the skin areas. So what I'm going to do now is do a save as. We're going to see, see, you can see right here, the last one was uh, the chalk that I was using, and then I dropped them all to uh, do some things with the glazing flat that I couldn't do 
when I had a layer above, and I don't understand that either, but it is what it is. So we're going to go to uh, oils, placing flat, and this will be number six. We'll just continue with this thing, and I know I can hit a bunch of undos and probably bring this back, but then as I I do that, you'll see that, yeah, it's not worth it. I, uh, okay, we'll just leave that go. Now, um, what I want to do here is, is to bring back some of those uh, really, I mean, I had this down to a pretty small size too, and it was looking, it was looking like it was, oh man, this thing's really hopping along very nice. And let me take that out of there and see if I can put that in a layer and uh, without any, without any problems. Okay, all right. We're just going to have to, I'm going to continue with this, and we'll see you on the next page, okay? And I'll bring you back right before I get into the finer areas of the um, soft chalk and how to do what needs to get done, and um, we'll do that in a little bit. Okay, we're back in working with the real soft chalk, and... The size was initially about 20, and what I have already done is I cut that in half around areas that I really want to grab the attention of the viewer is I have to make it available where they can just say, wow, look at the detail in that. And so here you can begin to see the uh, iris of Eric's eye. Of course, we can't see the other one. And the same thing, I'll do the same thing with the nose. And we're going to come back with uh, some other tools here in the, in the nose area. But what I'm going to do now is just continue with this a little bit more. Maybe make it oh, a little bit bigger. It's about a 10. Okay, let's just try it with that and see if that satisfies me. But I, want, I promised I'd bring you back when I got to the point of working in some finer detail where it was important that I, I showed the eyes. I mean, sometimes the musicians play, they play with their eyes closed. But uh, in this case... <laughs> Uh, in the original photograph, uh, definitely the, the eyes were open. And I think I've got that fairly well nailed. And around the nose, it looks pretty good, too. i do a little work in here. See, all I'm doing is I'm going to pick up some color, and everything's going to be okay. And you want to kind of go in the direction of the face, this cheekbone coming down, and same thing through here. I'm going to go, and this is kind of like an impressionist dab, I would call it. I do a lot of impressionist paintings too, um, particularly of uh, the Old South, and this is, I do a lot of this type of thing, real small, tiny. You can probably hear my uh, pen on, on the tablet. Well, that's, that's me chopping away. So we can just call this Don's Impressionist uh, dab or chop, whatever you want it. That, that, that's, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> it's all up to you. Now, I, uh, I got some in the ear, okay? And we're going to come back. I want the people to be able to say, hey, that's an ear. So the only way we can do it is kind of make it look like an ear. 
See, that's the light. That's why that's yellow in there. And uh, that's okay. You know, we'll get around those things. And I have on my Wacom tablet, it's, uh, it's pretty well set up that I can just move a couple of buttons and my brushes change size and and that type of thing. So oh, I, I know some of the newer tablets are a little more sophisticated than the old tablet that I had, um, that I do have, but this is what I have worked with for a long time. And I, I, I just I just don't want to change right now. I've been so comfortable. This thing has been um, been around for quite a while. And I still enjoy using it. I, I have no I have no reason right now to move to a um, to a different Wacom tablet unless they want to give me a discount, a big discount, like free. <laughs> Then uh, can I talk about them enough? Maybe they can help me out a little bit. So anyway, um, I got that area. Now I'm going to come back and refine with some taps or chops along the neck area of Eric. And I got some larger chops up here. We'll just turn those into smaller ones. And so now it's beginning to look more like a pastel type of painting, uh, pastel and chalks. And that's exactly what I wanted to have happen with this, um, with this particular painting. I, like I said, I painted one the other day of Brad Paisley, and uh, I ended up using an awful lot of the, uh, I want there. I'm going to make that just a tad bigger. Go to about seven. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's blending in very nicely. And just take your time and move through the chops. And uh, you'll do just fine. And just to follow the shape of the face and the hair. Okay, I'm going to put this as a save as. We're going to go back to, uh, we're going to go back to uh, number seven. What I'm going to do from this point forward is uh, do something and just continue to save. I, I, I pretty much know what brushes I've been using and will continue to use throughout this entire process. So now I've got to get back. I want to name this layer. And I'm going to call this um, some charcoal. And so when I come back to it, I'll know the brush that I worked with in this layer. Pretty sweet, huh? You can also um, add some information here, um, like 20% uh, opacity, and um, reset, excuse me, 60% opacity, wasn't it? Holy macro, come on, Don. 80%. I don't have my glasses on. 80% opacity and 24% uh, reset. Okay, that's enough. So if I need to see what the settings were when I was working in this area of the skin tones and down by um, Eric's hand, um, I left some of those other brush marks on there from the um, liquid ink because it, it gave me a nice, a nice, really nice looking perspective and uh, just put a different style of, of footprint. See this in here? This is all done with liquid inks here and around here. So I, I, didn't, I didn't get into that too much. 
Now I'm just going to continue along in the process a little bit here. And every now and then I just have to stand back and see how it's coming. And so far I'm happy with the way things are turning out. I know that I did work with the glazing flat. See, this is a history bar up here. And some of them stem from a previous painting that I did. But um, I, there is the oil glazing flat at about six. I want to see what that's going to do to this. Oh, yeah. Very nice. And here's where we, we want to pay attention to what we're doing and do it in a slow, delicate process. I'm barely, barely touching my Wacom tablet. And uh, it's just turning out okay. All right, yeah, it's turning out fine. Now, I know that the hair is flowing in this direction. We'll come down here. See how this glazing flat brush can work for you? Just a neat little brush that I uh, discovered when I, I took a webinar recently. And, um, boy, you live and learn, and you try something, and you say, my God, is that neat. All the things that I can do with this brush and will be doing throughout the painting. And what I'm going to do is let you go here for a little bit. And during the very short intermission, uh, stopping the recording <laughs> is all I'm doing. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and continue to paint. And so the recording doesn't get too awfully, too awfully long. You know, we, we want to do things uh, quickly for the people that are just learning Corral Painter, but we want to do them right, too. So um, I'm going to come back with some. Yeah, that looks nice. Right there. It's pretty sharp. And these are what I call the uglies. You've heard me talk about those before. <laughs> uh, boy, they just sneak in everywhere you go. And they're just uh, things that you want to take care of, but you don't want the viewer to necessarily see in your paintings. Anyway, a few minutes ago I said goodbye for a while, and here I am still, uh, still talking to you. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I am going to say goodbye, and we'll catch up with you later in the painting, okay?